Hello. Can everybody hear me out there? I'm watching Charlie's sh chat. What are they saying? Devin says, I want to solve the problem of life being hard. We hear you. Oh, that's nice. We're not doing that today, though. We're doing love. <laughs> so hi, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'll look straight into the camera. Um, welcome to uh, Life is Easy. Um, I'm River L. Ramirez, and this is Charlie Mark Brighter. Charlie, if you want to introduce yourself. Sorry, I just dropped my child. Um, that's all I have to say. Um, well, the, the rules of the show are that there's a chat going on and you all here can join the chat if you want to, or you can just participate with your words, whatever's less scary. Um, Charlie's going to be uh, making a story with the audience online and we're gonna be making a story um, at the same time. Um, yeah, and the, the topic is, is love. Is there anything that I missed? No? All right, and there will be a snack time, so I hope that you brought snacks. And if not, um, we can share. Uh, there's stuff in the back you can have too. But let's get started. How are you feeling, Charlie? I feel awesome. Awesome. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel like maybe a little nervous because we haven't done this for a long time. We used to do a show called Art is Easy during pandemic when we were locked down and we did it like a lot. Do you remember? Like we did it for in the beginning of pandemic, like all the 20 step, like the first fully first 27 days of pandemic. That was it. So we, I drew every day and that was like really cool, but it was a little crazy. Yeah, we didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> we didn't, <laughs> and we're still in it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, what do you think about, you're in love, beautiful. Can you tell me about that? Um, it's so great. Um, and my bo uh, here's what love is like to me. Um, my boyfriend came tonight. <gasps> right. Ah! Round of applause for the boyfriend. Yeah, and um, knew that I hadn't eaten enough beforehand, and so brought me food. And I was like, "Do you want some?" And they were like, "No, stop, just finish it." And I was like, "No, uh, you you should have a bite too." And they were like, "Finish it." Please. Beautiful. Um, and brought our child. That's a dog. Beautiful. Everyone saw Gravity. Gravity is Charlie's child. It's so so nice to have your whole family here. And would you say love is easy? No. What makes love not easy? Taylor says in the chat, love is sharing. And mm. I would agree with Taylor. I just think that, unfortunately, sometimes the conditions which would um, make it easy for us to share with each other don't exist. Right, right. Like, we are selfish. Or we're incentivized to be selfish. Right, right. I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Does anybody in the chat have anything to say about love? When I think of love, I think of, I thought of this. Just straight off the bat, we're gonna make a poster tonight. Um, and then I'm gonna print them out in time for Valentine's Day. And if you want, you can buy one later. But this is, so the colors, I picked this out right before everybody came. But I was like, I think love is like, I think of blood. <laughs> I think of like, mm, like nothing like nothingness turns, like suddenly you feel all of your blood rushing. So that's what I think of love. So I, I pick this background. But yeah, you guys can start spitting. What, what does the, in the crowd, what do you think of love? When the first images, any images, just say what's coming out. Water, water, water's good. Holding hand, ah, you're so cute. 
What else? Cuddling! Oh my god. That's so cute. Already there's like, we're cuddling in water. Wow, Leo Faxica says, love is connection. Leo Faxica, could you say more about that? That's really interesting. Wow, Taylor says, open, empty, book. Open, comma, empty, book. So I'm going to do the water. When I think of the waters of love, I don't, I feel like it's like, so here we are, the, adding the water. Amazing. So, uh, somebody said something. Looks like heartbeats. <gasps> are we inside of a heart? Maybe. In the chat, Spike said, love is trust. Love is trust. But trust can be very hard. But how about visually? What is trust? No, I meant that visually. Like, can you draw trust? Can I draw a trust? Like, in terms of assets? Assets. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> Wait, how, can you send me a picture of a trust? And then I'll do it. Okay. I'll put it in here. So anything can go in here. But be careful about what you conjure. Okay. Spike says love is dogs. Okay. Does everybody agree with this? Dog is love. Okay, that's good. I think that's the, that might be the title of the of the thing. So let's see. Let's see. I'm going to get closer in here to the water. We're going to do some I'm going to put some people who drowned in the water. So in the bottom <laughs> that died cuddling. It's gonna be nice. Maybe they're not dead. Maybe they can breathe underwater and they're mer <gasps> Maybe it's mermaids cuddling. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna draw some mermaids cuddling. Are the mermaids, um, what gender are the mermaids? Anybody? They should be what? I'm. Okay, a gender. I for a second I got scared. I thought you said Asian, <laughs> Me too. and I was like, Me too. <gasps> <laughs> no! I also found that. Yeah, that I was trying to find the right YouTube emoji to match that. I was like, this one, <laughs> this one. My gender is Asian. All right. <laughs> I well, like, I mean, Charlie is half Asian. That's the punchline. The, 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 there was no punchline. That's just fact checking. You know, if you need to know about what we can say, what we're allowed to say, Charlie is half Asian. I will not tell you about myself. Okay, so I'm going to do the cuddling. Love is when you get someone a 23andMe thing for Christmas. Beautiful. For me, mermaids have like stunning hair. <laughs> Oh, look at her hair. Phew. She looks like the mom in Ponyo. <laughs> her eyes are wide open. Black. Kissy face. Let's get closer to her. So, cuddling... another mermaid Wait, your head should be closer and all their hairs intertwined <laughs> they're like We're gonna go in and correct this. It's not very good right now, but we're just putting the... Oh wait, what did you send me? You sent me a trust? What is this? <laughs> 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 okay, so that's happening. 
<laughs> okay, I think that's happening over the water. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit bigger. And he's like, I don't wanna go down there. But down there is a beautiful mermaid cuddling. <laughs> Stunning. Okay, so I'm gonna need to work on the mermaids a little bit. What, what, what are they saying in the chat about love? Anybody fall out of love recently? And you're like hurting? Because I want some of that pain in here. Diana actually something, said something very poetic. What? Um, Diana is such a poetic person. She said, mm. love pulls you in. And I asked her to elaborate and she said, like the concept of the tide and being pulled in under, sorry, being pulled under really resonates with me because that's how it feels. And, it, and then in parentheses, to be fair, my experiences with love weren't the healthiest, exclamation point. Right. Although I would say- Is she saying, or are they, what pronouns please? She, her. Is she her saying that I'm unhealthy? No, 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 I think she was saying, this was her experience, but she doesn't want to universalize it because she exactly. feels like, but to which I would say whose experiences are healthy because the conditions of life are so bad, so they can't be healthy. Right. What is the healthy? What? Okay. I guess what would the, that's a good point. What would the healthiest form? I, I guess that's what I want us to think of love be. Maybe it's not the mermaids drowning in the water, but they could be cuddling. They're not drowning, right? Because they can breathe underwater. You're right. I totally fucked up and I made up that they were mermaids. All right, so I'm gonna go back to drawing them. So, okay, they're not dead. And they're enjoying themselves. Okay, so I think they're here. And he became a mermaid. He drowned for love. Beautiful. Would you drown for love? What would you do for love? That's a good answer. That's healthy. Okay. I would not do, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think I'm very used to like also the unhealthy stuff. So I'm like trying to think about what, what it would be like to be balanced. So in, I think like where I'm at right now, I wouldn't do anything for love. <laughs> You know, like, I'm like, maybe you shouldn't do anything for love. Yeah. I feel like just letting things, like, you know, you you can't control anything. I feel like all my ideas of, like, love from, like, TV. I'm like, really, that's where I learned it from. It's what? It's twisted. Yeah. So, I don't know, because I'm redefining it. Diana says, the anti-meatloaf, and then in parentheses, sorry, Gen X joke. The anti-meatloaf? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know, but someone named Cyclometricus responds, at Diana, you beat me to that one, period. Okay, this is better cuddling. I love this Gen X humor. Thanks, guys. Is that Gen X? Are they Gen X? Yeah, they're Gen X. What are we? Millennial. Fuck. We're the most hated. Damn. Are we millennial? Yes. Because I remember people above us being millennial. I think the cutoff is like um, 30, like 38, 39 on the older end and like being 25 or 26 on the lower end. So. Oh, damn. 
we're right in the middle. I feel like we get you get some leeway because like transition like pushes you back to puberty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, but. that sucks. Millennial. <laughs> so I, I like th I like this couple now. They're kind of more at peace. They're like we're enjoying each other, but you don't have to be here forever. I feel like that's the vibe for me. <laughs> Diana just explained, Meatloaf the singer has a song. <laughs> I would do anything for love. And River was talking about not doing anything for love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Well, oh, you know you know how like the story used to be like I leave all my friends and family and I'll, if you move away, I don't know, this is, if you, if somebody you love moves away, you just drop everything and you go with them. And I'm like, I don't know if that is, like, can't you, why can't you have both? I think that's true. I think that, um, uh, I mean, in the past, love used to be just like um, a, a financial agreement where you're like choosing to merge your assets right. um, and have kids. Exactly. Um, and then it shifted to being like, oh, love is a marriage, uh, marriage is a love bond now. So instead of providing financial stability, this is a, supposed to be like the thing that makes everything in life okay. Um, mm. Which is, it's a, a obviously like a horrible, toxic right. pressure to put on anyone. It's like being those two it's well, they're vibing. Yeah, no, I was. It's like being the um, Adobe Photoshop logo, right? Can you can you guys hear me better now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, I know I'm taking my mask off, but you guys are really far away, and I'm gonna pray. Um, Do you like their hair? I love big hair. <laughs> We're getting more Gen X lore in the chat. Um, what What are they saying? What are the youngins saying? Uh, oh God! So, um, Cyclometricus says the singer Meatloaf had a famous song called, in quotes, "I would do anything for love," and the chorus ends with, "But I won't do, do that. Th do that." Everyone speculates on what that is. Anal. Wow, you called it. It Wait sounds like it. Right? So Spike asked their boyfriend who says Eric said that Meatloaf wrote Eric said that Meatloaf wrote that song because his GF asked to peg him. Yeah. And then Kate pointed at that affirmatively. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 that. Although he would have probably enjoyed it, because that's where his G spot would be, biologically speaking. If we're gonna get biological <laughs> <laughs> about gender that's really important thank you yeah it, it really is okay so they're hugging in the ocean so cute two mermaids cuddling in the ocean so cute Um, I, f he, I forgot I'm supposed to do something also, which is um, write a story with you guys. Um, so um, we're going to do that in half the time that we were supposed to. Um, so I just went to something called masterclass.com slash articles. Um, and I'm looking at five classic elements of a narrative arc. I'm just going to put this link in the chat. Um, okay, we've got our waves. We've got our people. We're just really proving that life and art are so easy um, because they're all on masterclass.com slash articles. Um, okay, so um, for those of you who can't see the link, it says basically um, stories in classically have to just be like kind of like a triangle. So you have introduction to the story, building up to the narrative climax, something called falling action, which is like kind of emo, um, and then resolution. So that's five steps, one, two, three, four, five, but it could also just be three, depending on time. Um, 
okay so the way i'm gonna do this is um open up a google doc diana in the chat recently taught someone how to use google docs who had only experienced word docs before just i know people in the audience are nodding diana they're like understanding what a feat you just performed let's give it up for diana congrats diana you're awesome um okay so um story so um what do we want our story to be about we've generated a lot of ideas about love um who do we want our main character to be i'll ask that question in the chat as well yeah and our options are the two mermaids or the guy falling or the people trying to help what do you guys think i think this is this this feels like you know when your friend your friend is falling in love and you're like no (laughs) (laughs) why is that are you having that reaction you're it's, not happy for them? No, I am. I am. <laughs> but that you just see them less and you're like, well, it's okay. You're fucking. See, this is the problem of none of us having enough time. Exactly. It's so sad. Because you got to give your friends time to fuck. Diff- people that aren't you. I mean, you're. I hope, hopefully you're not fucking your friends. <laughs> you're right. Only your enemies. Only your enemies. Um, Hopefully you're just fucking people you hate. Okay, so what are the option, the character options again? The we mermaid? have the... Uh, we could add a new character. It's just going to take me some time. I'm still in the mermaids. But we have the mermaids, um, and then we have the person falling, and we have the friends that are helping. But we also have this person in the back who's not. Yeah, so we have we have a lot of options. Their love is so powerful, says Precious. Oh. I think that's the first line of our story. There was nothing in the ocean. There was nothing in the ocean but their love. I'm gonna give this one blue hair. What did you say? <laughs> yeah, and this one's name is Egg. <laughs> yeah, Egg and one time, wait, one time I went out with someone named Tape. And I was like, and it was my first like <laughs> like queer date and I was like, wow, I'm really doing it. Um, it was, I didn't think they were well. (laughs) 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 Like, the neck, the, but I don't, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't think they were okay, so I was concerned, actually. I think I'm literally drawing myself kissing a mermaid. Come here. Oh, that's what I I would do that for love. I would learn how to breathe underwater. If like a mermaid showed up in my life. That's not your hand. That's the other. That's the other hand. But where is your hand? <sighs> See, that can happen with drawing. You can really forget your hands. Maybe you have none. Right. Thank you. So I'm gonna do the mermaid now, and the mermaid is. I think the skin of this mermaid is purple.
Okay, are you guys ready for part one of the story we wrote together? I'm gonna drop it in the chat right now. This is our merch drop. Part one. There was nothing in the ocean but their love, and she had blue hair. Not just because they were lesbians, and that movie blue is the warmest color exists, but because there are no hands in love. Okay, so that was our exposition. First part of the triangle. Um, now what we're going to do is the rising action. So according to masterclass slash articles, this is when conflict begins to ramp up. The rising action usually begins with what's called in quotes, an inciting in incident, the triggering event that puts the main events of the story in motion. This is when the audience starts to see what your story, this is in italics, is really about. Um, so yeah, just, I'm going to ask the chat and then audience, feel free to think about this also, what you think this story is really about and where you would like the rising action to focus. And for the audience here, um, you can add on to that story also. So is there anything you all backstepping, backstabbing? Wow. You've been through a lot. <laughs> Backstabbing. Wow, you just nodded. You're just doing anything else. You feel like one of them has legs. Like one of them's lying about being a mermaid, huh? Okay, okay. So, do you think we should make like the mermaid version of her, or okay, on the tail? And uh, maybe a leg. Okay, maybe like, maybe a zipper or maybe like a little, like it's styled. So the leg is popping out, like sexy. I'm gonna do that. Like we've cut the fish open and it's like a sexy leg. Fish nets. Wait, why are you looking? Oh, right, cause I have this. Okay, so here's the color lines. So we're gonna do a little slit here. And we're gonna have a, oh, I love a sexy leg. <laughs> I feel like her thigh should be fatter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking freak. Okay, and then the little toes are wiggling in the water. Okay, and then we're going to clean it up. Get closer to the leg. <sighs> Stunning. Should we put a shoe on the foot or is a barefoot good? A crock? What did you send me, Charlie? You, oh, accept this. <laughs> it's Spike. I think Spike would be, oh, is there someone trying to like destroy the love? <laughs> no, Spike loves their love. Oh, okay, so what's Spike doing here? Just being happy for them. Okay. <laughs> But is it like overarching, like a god in the sky kind of thing? Totally. I feel like it might be. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. I gotta finish the. I gotta finish them. <laughs> Important question from the chat. Um, this one's for the audience from user OK Fox. You guys ready? 
What are the things on Crocs called? Giblets? Question mark. Okay. Someone <laughs> says gibbets. I need a picture of a croc to put on the foot. Any gibbets requests? With <laughs> Love is gibbets. That's the title, I think. <laughs> Love is gibbets. Okay, we're going to take a snack break, but I'm going to keep drawing. But that just means you can get up, or you could take a snack out. You can really do whatever you want. Or take some from the stage, feel free to. That's why the, would you, anyone want some dates? If you're at home right now watching us, I hope you're taking a snack break because it's about that time. It's actually like we're late on the snack break because we got so into the story. Can you say that actually louder? Wait, I'm going to pass you the mic. I know, I know, but I couldn't say it. You said it really good. <laughs> no, no, it sounded, I'm an academic, so I can tell <laughs> that it, you were right. A giblet shaped gibbet holding a gimlet. Can you do it again? That was really good. <laughs> gibbet, <laughs> gibbet, Sorry, I'm reading. That, that was good too. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, no, Kyle is actually a professional I can't have those. Can I have a Coke? <laughs> I'm okay. Thank you, though. Thanks for the coerced audience participation. Um, that meant a lot to us. Okay, I'm, I'm good with their color now. Little leg peeking out. I need to put the croc at some point. They're beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. We are sponsored by, we're not. Oh, don't. Okay. I think this is good enough for now and I'm gonna move on to Um, Cyclometricus says that was perfect. What was perfect? The audience says thank you. Um, are you guys ready for part two of the story? All right, here we go. Part two. This is where the rising action is supposed to occur. Probably this involves a fight. I don't want the mermaids to fight though. There are only two characters so far. We like them, lol. Um, so yeah, what I tried to do there is subvert the narrative expectation for conflict um, by giving you guys a lack of conflict. And I tried to make you question why you expected them to fight in the first place. Um, and to think maybe those 
the fact that they we expect love to be conflict is um, ideological and a result of material privation rather than a biological or essential fact about mermaids. Oh, you think so? And, but do you think she accepts it? Oh, so this is this is great. Whoa, it's okay. So, no trans. This is great. You're creating narrative um, climax. Um, trans mermaidal. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. Oh, you're right. We forgot. What do you think they should? They should be doing some stuff. You're right. How do they come in? According to Masterclass, um, this is the highest point of tension in your storyline, and often the point at which all the different subplots and characters converge. Typically, the climax requires the main character to face the truth or make an important choice. Okay, so the thing about the does she have legs or not could be the important choice or truth. Oh... Okay, let me check. So I'm picturing like the croc is in floating in the water. This is pretty good. That looks like. Okay, it's gonna be our sky person. I support your love. And then we're gonna get to the people now. Perfect. And I kinda wanna make them look, um, want, cause I feel like when you fall in love, you look really vulnerable. You, like you can get really vulnerable and so it, it doesn't look cool. So I want the person falling to look like really stupid. All right, but we gotta do the rocks. Yeah. We can. Why? What, what's coming up for you? <laughs> it looks like he's eating something, though. Maybe he, he he's offering advice. Or just... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. But do you want him to help then? Or maybe he's like... Okay, I'll leave him for last. We're feeling a lot about this guy. But he's like literally, there's three people helping. Like if that was my friend, I'd be like, I'm never going on a trip with you. Let me give her bigger hair. And a little nose. And a big ass. <laughs> All these people are so skinny.
I'm gonna give him a huge ass too. Big booty. And this guy doesn't have a big ass, so he's like sad about it. This person. This guy's got a <laughs> huge dick. My friend, I wish I could help, but I've, my huge dick is keeping me from reaching too far, too fast. Okay, and this is a person. I'm gonna make them look stupid as fuck, and we're gonna see them. Are you guys ready for a narrative climax? Okay, cool. I'm gonna drop it in the chat as well. Oops, sorry, this is um, part three. Our narr and so this is instead of the fighting, what happens instead? Our narrative gaze turns suddenly to a row of people holding hands on a cliff. In the sky, giblets shine like stars. Suddenly, one of the people begins to fall. They look stupid lol. They fall. Part three. Whoa, that's so deep. The what? They said, the back guy has never fallen in love, and that's the oh. only thing we know about him. So maybe we'll put a little thought bubble on, but I wish that was me falling. I wish that was me falling, looking stupid as fuck. I'll make him more sad. Are what? <laughs> right. Oh, okay. And the back guy is not into it. No. He's like, I'm only sexually attracted to squares, not like a hexagon. So sad. He'll say lorem ipsum. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, lorem ipsum. <laughs> lorem ipsum. He's so sad. Lorem ipsum. of the love wow look at this this is amazing we're really getting somewhere and i think we should put text on it to like just kind of end end it soon. right we're at the end peter what oh the 20 minutes great so there's 20 left. Okay, cool. Well, I don't want to keep anyone for that long, though. I just want to know if I can finish this. Um, we need to add the croc. 
I airdropped it to you. Oh, you airdropped me the croc? I don't think I received it. Fuck. I was too busy coloring. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you part four because we're running out of time. Part four. <clears throat> That's perfect. Everyone is helping the falling, falling man, except one guy is not. Why? Because he's never been in love. That's all we know about him. He's only into hexagons sexually, and he's never met one IRL before. Lorem Ipsum. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> is that the text for this? Where you go? There you are. And then, uh, I talk like this when I'm making stuff. When there's a mistake, I talk like talk to the computer and like get the fuck out of here this is a weird leg but we'll make it work oh maybe it no no don't don't worry i'll delete the other one i just needed the croc i'm gonna make it bigger Do you think this is what it's like at advertising companies? Oh, we wanted starfish, right? What else? A fish? Uh, okay. I'm gonna have okay, so. All right, maybe, okay, you guys are asking for a lot, so I'm gonna have to get detailed. No, this is good. It's just I have to adjust. All right, so we're in the shoe. We want a seashell. Well, we want a starfish. We want a seahorse. What does seahorse look like again? Like. Kind of looks like a embryo, right? Wait, the tail is like, and it's like this, and then was it behind it or in front of it, right? Like this? <laughs> I drew an embryo or, yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna do that to the, Little starfish. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a little octopus. It's more of a squid, I think. And then jellyfish. Great, got a bunch of little things on my foot.
This is the end of the story, part five. In publishing and graphic design, lorem ipsum is placeholder text, commonly used to demonstrate the visual form of a document or a typeface without relying on meaningful content. Love is meaningful. But the surprise is now we're gonna write an epilogue. I remember learning about epilogues when I was a kid and I thought that was so crazy because the book just ended and you're so sad because you have to say bye to all the characters. But then there's actually like a PS at the end, like a PS of a letter. So we're gonna write that together now. Um, if you were to add one thing to the story that you didn't get to see, what would it be? I'll give you guys a, check, a second to respond. Thank, oh, go ahead, Kay. <laughs> That's such a good question. What do you think? Yeah, okay, I loved how you brought in previous narrative strands. Uh, what you did there was you took the B plot um, and once the A plot had been resolved, you centered the B plot so that it became the A plot in turn. That was really complex. Um, thank you, I think we're gonna do that. Um, also in the chat, OK Fox says, Lorem Ipsum is all grown up now. I feel uncomfortable with, with how they're sexualizing Lorem Ipsum who's a child, um, but we're not, we're not gonna add that to that blog. We still love you though, okay. What was the question? The question was, um, we're writing an epilogue to the story, Taylor, so if there's something you wanted to add that you didn't get to see in the story so far, um, feel free to let us know in the chat and um, hopefully we can put it in that blog. YouTube. What color is the croc? But what, what color do you all want the croc to be? A white croc? Oh, sorry, Diana. So um, we're adding an epilogue now um, based on um, audience feedback, um, which was to bring back the guy who's on the cliff, who's kind of grumpy and not helping um, because he's a rancid individualist. Um, and so the audience members suggested bringing him back in. Um, so he was the B plot. Um, and so now we're going to make that the A plot together. Epilogue. I bet you forgot about the hexagon fetishist. Well, he didn't forget about sex. He went on Grinder and he met a hexagon IRL and they boned. Now, dot, 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 he's happy. Smiley face. That's the end, guys. So good, Charlie. I'm still not done, though. That's okay. Um, I. But I mean, I think this is pretty good. I just feel like, do we need anything else for this? Oh. 
Wow. Love him Ipsum. <laughs> That's really good. Wow, that really ties it all together. Then I think the next one, we're gonna really focus on that. We're gonna start with that guy. Who is he? What's Lord. his story? Will he be happy in the future, says Precious. I'm gonna do it like if I'm correcting a paper. <laughs> Love him ipsum. Should we write it again, like here or some? Love. doesn't work. Devin in the chat says, I'm loving the Ipsum. <laughs> final thing we do mm, that's not it hold on it takes a while to find the right love <laughs> mm. <laughs> <If so. laughs> and nobody will understand that but this room <laughs> Now that's some site specific art. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll, I'll maybe like I mean I might fix it up later, but I think this is the poster. I think this is what we made for today, everybody. Um, and we've learned today about love that it's hard, but as long as you <laughs> are um, not closed off to the idea of joining a poly, um, like there are these three people and you're willing to jump off um, a cliff to choppy waters of love where mermaids <laughs> are cuddling with no kind of no pressure cuddling then you could also have love and ipsum one day <laughs> and we did a great job thanks everybody and that was life is easy we're leaving now thank you everybody in the chat for coming hopefully we can do this again thanks for your help bye Wow, K Kyle just gave a pun for us as we, this is our um, closing credits, a story of love and deception, line break, with mermaids and climbing and then some, line break, with graphic design, line break, and hexagons on our minds, line break, we made a story called Lorem Ipsum. <laughs> <laughs> love him Ipsum. Love him Ipsum. Wow, that was beautiful, Kyle. Thank you so much. I can't believe how many things rhymed there. That was unreal. <laughs> <laughs> this poster is insane. <laughs>